Anyway, um, good practice yesterday. Uh, first two a day was yesterday. We the two and two a days are not like they used to be anywhere in the country. But uh, had an hour and a half uh, practice in the morning with uh, helmets, and then went out uh, yesterday afternoon. And for the first time in a long time, I don't think it's ever happened here. We, we utilized all three of our our, our fields because uh, of the weather. It didn't uh, it didn't affect our guys. It always started outside. And, was up there for about an hour, and then it rained like uh, a lot. So we went inside, and then when it cleared up, we finished outside because we can't do live team drills on the inside. So uh, and it didn't it, it didn't phase our guys at all, which was proud of them being able to adjust and overcome that. So uh, uh, so got a lot done. So I take some questions <coughs> if we can hear because of the weight room activity down there. It, see how this poses a problem when we try to meet here. Right? First full contact, I mean, yeah, how'd they feel with pads? How'd they look, you know, just sort of getting back into the into the real aspect of football? Yeah, this is good. Um, I think we've had two full day of pads. Um, you know, we, we did the, the Oklahoma drill, which has been a tradition around here and a lot of other places, which was Exciting to see those guys get it all cranked up. It's a good way to start the, you know, when, when we do put the pants on, it's it's a good way to start it. So for the last uh, two days, we've been full pads. It, it, it's been it's been good. You know, when you we, there's a lot we can do when you're just in shells. You know, I mean, you're you're not gonna do it a whole lot different. We haven't tackled yet, so if the drills have have all been the same the last two days, then they did the two previous days with just the shoulder pads on. So. We will start today, we'll, we'll do a little bit of tackling today. Today will be the first day that that we put them in a situational um, type, uh, 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 not scrimmage, but just more situational stuff. We'll start introducing some third down stuff, and we'll start introducing some, some red zone stuff where we will, you know, not the whole practice obviously, but a, a portion of the practice will be able to start tackling to see if guys can actually tackle and what we do offensively as far as moving. If if you do an Oklahoma drill, do you think uh, when when Oklahoma practices short passes and stuff, they call it the West Virginia drill? Maybe <laughs> we had that we had that discussion. Uh, some of our coaches go, "Can we please change the name of this drill? What makes them so damn special?" Right? <laughs> I, I but it, it's it, it's just the drill. It's known across the country as the Oklahoma drill. I'm sure some people have changed the name of it, but we're not smart enough to. Are you at the point where you can start evaluating people now, or at least begin to start evaluating people now that the pads are on and you're going full speed, you're starting to do situations, things like that? Is this the beginning stages of it? We've been evaluating since day one. Uh, you know, I tell these guys that you know, pretty much everything's filmed, everything's evaluated. Uh, I, I can't tell you if we've made decisions. Uh, even if we have, I wouldn't tell you. But, but we, we're, we're evaluating these guys with everything that they do, whether it's non-padded, whether it's padded, whether it's, you know, guys being able in the right positions, if they're catching the ball, if they're turning and getting the field, if their ball security is good, if defensively if we're stripping it, communicating, all the rest of it. I mean, we're, we're evaluating constantly, uh, not to the point where we're making decisions yet. The situational thing will separate players, especially quarterbacks. You know, when we get in situations and they're able to situations and get us in good situations and execute it and least, from a quarterback point of view it will it will help us separate who's one and who's two and who's three and then defensively from a, when you go live can you get them on the ground or can you not get them on the ground you know from from the tackling And I understand you can't tell, or you're not going to tell us who's one, two, or three in quarterback. But do you have to make a decision, start to give somebody first team reps, you know, the week before the first game? Oh, yeah. That, yeah, not now. But mm -hmm. yeah, we have uh, nine more afternoon practices before we break camp. Uh, don't anticipate doing anything before that. We have started narrowing it down to where instead of 33% of the reps in skeleton team, we're going 50% of the reps in skeleton team. So, you know, 
know, today we'll pick two quarterbacks and they get 50% each, and then tomorrow it'll be, you know, two different. So they're still going to get equal reps over the course of, that, of nine practices, but they will start getting 50%, and, and 50% of those 50% will be first team and second team. So it, it'll be 100% equal for the next nine practices, um, and then we'll make a decision. I, I, you know, I don't know if I tell you or not. Probably want everybody to be in the dark, like everybody else does. But uh, we, we won't go into the first game without a clue of who's going to obviously be the governor. Is it possible that we, meaning media and fans, wouldn't know who the quarterback is until the first play? I would season? be surprised if you don't know. In social media, you know, we get our guys to try to keep as much that happens inside the building. To the people that need to know, um, but with social media and emotions and all that stuff, I'd be surprised if you don't know. Would you rather? I don't know yet. It, it depends on how clear cut it is. If it's real close, then you know we're we're, we're gonna keep it as close to the vest as we possibly can. If, it, if it's clear cut, then we'll probably let everybody know. What if what if it is that close? Makes my job harder. Yeah, it, 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 it's no different here than it is anywhere else across the country. I mean, you get quality guys, you get two quality guys, three quality guys, and in a position battle. I mean, obviously, at some point, you got to make a decision. You know, so uh, the closer it is, the harder it is. Those decisions are not easy. I mean, you know, when you talk about making a decision on who's going to play and who's not going to play, it affects kids' lives. You know, so uh, you know, these these are guys that are working hard. And somebody's going to be the guy, and somebody's not. It's hard to deal with if you're that guy that's not going to be the guy. Two quarterbacks that have not been I've never done it. You know, never done it. Don't plan on doing it. That doesn't mean we can't have two that are ready to play because guys get hurt and go down all the time. I mean, that's obviously the reality of college football. So it, it, and that's one thing that the second team guys always got to keep in mind. You know, that they're they're a play away from getting in there and playing a lot of ball. Not our guys, but for most 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 guys across the country, that's the way things are. The reality for us is is that's didn't happen very often. Are these guys similar similar enough that you wouldn't change much, uh, no matter which which one was one? If one week you had to make a deal, different deal. Correct. It's not our, like what Oklahoma had last year or whatever. Right. Yeah. That that's they're they're similar enough, and that's always been my philosophy on it. If you look back, our offense didn't change very much from Case Keenum to Brandon Weed. <laughs> for guys like on the offensive line, does it matter for them to get a feel of who the quarterback is? Yeah, I think it matters. <clears throat> I think it matters. Uh, you know, when, when when you're in the huddle or when you're under center, when you're the guy communicating, you know, the the, the trust factor of who's back there, the, the the leadership qualities, the you know, the belief in that this guy is gonna get it done. I mean, yeah, that. that There's a lot of differences, you know, from you know, what, what he's looking at uh, is important, <laughs> whether it's, you know, pre-snap coverage, whether it's post-snap coverage, whether it's, you know, receivers adjusting routes due to coverage. I mean, there's, it, 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 it takes some film and a lot of clinic time to be able to get into the, the, the details of that. But there, there's some differences with that. There's some differences in the drops. There's some differences in, you know, what you're looking at in the run game. To the, to, the, to the fan when you're just watching it. I mean, a lot of the offensive football looks the same, but what the actual details of it are, there's going to be differences everywhere. Um, you know, so what we're asking him to do is different. Uh, he's got game experience. He's got quarterback experience, but what we're asking him to do in our offense is, is, is different. So he's got to adjust to that. He's a smart kid. He's a bright kid. He's very intuitive. He's, he's got a good feel for the game, which is going to put him in position to be able to beat out guys that have been taking snaps in our offense for the last two to three years. So it's a credit to him that he's in the, he's in the race. A lot of quarterback talk today, huh? Yeah. 
the least says, thing that I like to talk about right now. <laughs> Keith says he, um, I don't know, he feels like he has a way to stop um, some of these Big 12 offenses. It's kind of unique, maybe. Um, I don't know how much you've done against that in practice yet, but you've done against him in the past. Yeah. What, what twice, different? That's why he's been hired. Exactly. Um, but Plus he's a good guy. <laughs> what does he, um, I guess without giving away the recipe, but are there certain things that he does that just makes it difficult, that takes away things that are kind of unique to his his plan? Yeah, yeah. And, and again, this would take a lot, you know, it'd take a lot of detail to be able to figure it out. But his, his you know, the, the three four is is perimeter oriented. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, back with with you know the, the nuts and bolts of what we've always done offensively has been perimeter. Not just being able to throw the ball downfield or run between the tackles when there's not enough people in the box, but being able to get the ball in the perimeter where the defense has to cover the whole field. You have to go sideline to sideline, and then they have to go backwards to be able to, you know, be able to go downfield if if if, if, you, if you have to as well. It's, it's about offensively us trying to make them defend the whole field, and I think he's got an excellent plan for being. Gets, he gets the tempo stuff. I mean, I went against him four years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, and then he's been here with us for, for two years. So it's, so it's about six years straight that he's been preparing for an offense that's very similar to ours, or for several of those years specifically for ours. Uh, well, if you look at what everybody's doing in the Big 12, it's, it's you know, it's, it's very spread-oriented. It's very tempo-oriented. Um, there's, there's obviously a lot of similarities in what we do. Very familiar with it. But does he do something that disarms the, the how fast teams like to play? Because he even says that it's a matter of what he does that will discourage or just flat take out of going fast. Well, I mean, the, I don't. I, I hope so. You know, because everybody <laughs> tempos. Um, you know, uh, you know what specifically? I mean, how do you how do you stop tempo when well, you get lined up? Is is kind of the key number one. I mean, if you can get lined up. Then get calls and get it communicated in a very short time, it gives you a chance to be successful. So, yeah, I think he's got a pretty good plan for it. You have to play everybody in the conference, obviously, uh, you know, one time. But with a new quarterback, with a young team, you know, an inexperienced team pretty much, is it really a good thing or a bad thing, or does it matter having, coming out of the box, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, the first two games? Is that... I mean, does that put your season on the line right away in the first month of the season? Or? I don't think so. <laughs> you got to play them sooner or later, you know, so when you play them, I don't know if that matters. I mean, there's going to be some teams that are especially experienced teams, which I don't know how you technically categorize experienced teams or non-experienced teams. But uh, I, I, I guess the more experienced teams are going to be a little bit better early, you know, where the inexperienced teams, if they have the pieces in place, they're they should gradually get better and be a little bit better at the end of the year. But I would assume pretty much everybody's going to be a little better at the end of the year than they are at the beginning of the year. So I, I don't know yet. I've, I've never played a conference game that early, so my tune might change on it after I do it. But it's not like it's the first time it's ever happened. You know, we got to play them game two. They got to play us game two. So I see it being pretty comparable. More about that schedule, if you don't mind. You don't have an open week until after six. I think that's kind of, kind of unusual. Yeah, I wish it was a little bit more evenly spread out, but there's nothing I can do about it. The one thing on the, the end of the year thing, <coughs> which I've uh, been public about this, is this is the first year that that we get that first week of recruiting off. So our last game's on the first, where other teams play a game on the seventh. Uh, there's eight Big 12 teams that are playing on the, the seventh, two that's not playing on the seventh. We're one of the two that's not on the seventh. So we get an extra week of recruiting, which doesn't seem fair to me. But we've always been the team, and it happened when we're in the Big East as well. Uh, and then when the Big 12 went to where they weren't playing the championship game, they went to a round robin uh, scheduling last year. Then, uh, you know, so they, they have games on the seventh as well. Uh, so this is the first year we get that first week of recruiting. My follow-up was 
actually on recruiting, so good job. Data status update for Howard, Henry, McDonald, the three guys who weren't here. Haven't heard. Haven't heard. Nana, Nana's gonna, not an injury report. Nana's going to have shoulder surgery. He's going to red shirt and have, have shoulder surgery. <coughs> so he, he went down. Uh, Dream has had him practice in about three days. He's got a five ruse. Hopefully it's, it should be fine today. I mean, that's obviously day to day. We thought Sean Austin was day to day too, and he ended up missing a whole <laughs> team runs. Um, Dante Campbell had shoulder surgery and missed spring. It, that thing popped out again yesterday, so that's unfortunate for him. I, I don't have an update on him. I don't know if it's another surgical procedure or what, but he didn't practice yesterday, which was unfortunate for him. Other, other than that, we're pretty healthy. Did Zana get hurt here? Or What's that? Did Zana get hurt yeah, here? Yeah, he, he, it was loose. You know, he went through all the spring with it being loose. You know, it was loose when he got here and then played last year and was loose in the spring, played through it, and practiced two or three, I don't, I don't know, it, it popped out. We, we were contemplating surgery with him anyway. Uh, we know he has a red shirt here. It's going to end up being good for him. You know, so he's going to go ahead and get it fixed right now. And, <coughs> and, then, and then red shirt, and we'll be back for spring. You know, one thing we want, well, should we cut it now so we can be back for spring, or should we let him try to play through it? We let him try to play through it for about two days, and then it, it, it got loose and popped out. So. Get red shirt and then be back for spring practice in three years. So it's, 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 it's